Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. This is Rangaroo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, today on show, we give you a Div 2 matchup. Rang, who do we have? On left-hand side, in the blue, we have XX playing the 5th Romanian Cavalry with Maverick Income. And on the right-hand side, in the red, we have Hippocrash playing the 5th German Mountain Infantry, also with a Maverick Income. So, the Battle of the Fives. I mean, this is not Umbrella Academy. This is not Cinco de Mayo. Like, we have, we have fives on both sides. What, what should we be expecting out of this? I mean, because both are fairly light divisions, right? Yeah, they're both pretty similar divisions. Not a whole lot of armor on either side, but a lot of infantry, decent amount of artillery and air support, and it's a good map for these light infantry star divisions. Because you don't really have to use too many tanks when there's trees galore. That's certainly true, but that it does mean that some of these things like the IAR coming in right about now actually has a fairly good chance of attacking and killing a lot of these armored fighting vehicles, even with the HE bombs that it does have. Yeah, I actually forgot how ridiculous of a loadout that is for a recon plane. Oh yeah. That's a lot of bombing potential right yeah. Oh yeah. Brownings, turrets, more turrets, yeah, and, and of course, many, many bomblets. So there we go. I mean, much earlier on, we're going to see a lot of light vehicles. In fact, we're going to have a Lux right now. Unfortunately, probably going to be rather unluxy, as that Italian Stoke is probably going to engage him pretty quickly. No, he's engaging the Rosoria. That's I that's very, very lucky. Sight. That's I true. I really love that little smoke play he did for the Pioneers, I think, to protect the Lukes, but the Lukes was not, like you said, Luke and the AB-41 was more than enough to knock it out. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, we're going to have that the whole kind of earlier stuff here. We're going to just be seeing a lot of just jockeying for position. But I'm sorry, you were going to say, sir, please. Oh, nothing. That was that was it. Okay. Well, I mean, we, we do have ourselves some Gebergsjägers and some Strife. Uh, well, Geber Geberg's Strife troops over here. I'm going to a quick call out to them, because I feel like we don't see the Strife very often. Just five MP44s, the double MGs, like, these guys are tough. Yeah, they're pretty similar to, um, 78 Sturm, just crazy STG squad show. A little bit smaller, but still a pretty hefty amount of firepower. Very, very true. And you can see right now the IAR is being so cheap. Yes, it is 55 points, but 55 points for a fairly decent light bomber earlier on, like, you almost can't go wrong. With the recon optics, meaning yes. you can see what you're going to blow up. And in the early stages of the map like this, especially when, well, I say not a lot of anti-air, but the aircraft will be the anti-air in this case, and especially against this map and division, it's a fantastic unit to be bringing out. Unfortunately, the only downside to these is you only really get two. So this isn't like some of the Russian divisions where you get you know the waves upon waves of just crazy amounts of recon planes. And I thought for half a second that C-205 was going to somehow get, catch up to him, but no, he just kind of poured it out of there. That was actually very, very fortunate. Yeah, it was quite uh, unfortunate you know, for the 205. Guys, that could have been a pretty easy kill, but just, of course, the plane pathfinding in really all the Eugene games into LM battle has always felt more like a uh, slot machine and really any tactical finesse. Slot machine? I, I would have gone with Plinko, but that's that's fair enough. <laughs> yeah, it's honestly more accurate. Uh, but Double X over here is not quite um, controlling the middle quite as well as he might. Uh, you have the 81mm uh, stovepipe that is there to kind of maybe push back this miniature push that could be developing in that central forest, those five squads right there. Yeah. But outside of that, actually, there's... I think this is an overreaction. We have three Bredas being brought on in right about now. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know where, yeah, what is he going to try to do with them up north? Where is he actually deploying them first? Okay, he's spreading them out all over. I think he's just trying to set up more of a defensive position up north after that initial little aggressive action has failed. We're also seeing down south a bit, Hippocrats is pushing down from the southern hill and actually getting into a very good little flanking position here for his forest. Yeah, that, that's what I, should, I think trying to point out before. So we have a lot of Fusiliers here. We have Sturm Pioneers and the mortar, yeah, the mortar's going to get into action, but he's aiming the wrong direction. Okay, I, I take that back. I was excited for a second. I'm, I'm a little bit less so now. Yeah, but the Roy's Roy, I can't bloody say it properly. The Romanian infantry squad of the two ZB30s actually doing a pretty good job of well, holding the line at least, as the Sturm Pioneers having a little bit of an issue of getting too close for them to Sturm with their 
pioneer rep and without being a flamethrower. True. Now, very, very luckily enough, this mortar, despite firing, in my mind, in the wrong kind of sector, well, the strife troops are going to be moving <laughs> right into the shelling. So that very, very lucky on that one to have such a reaction over here. Ooh, and the Kalarasis. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great position for that sniper squad. Really, XX is a very good just kill, like, beat zone. Rayo Strife, uh, they don't, the Strife at least, can't really, even though they do have a lot of MG42s, just have a bit of a hard time they're holding, especially with just the smaller squad sizes do screw you over a bit. True, true. If both sides are taking catch in the collective breath, we are going to see just a little bit more of light vehicles being brought to the front, some more kind of spotter troops. I feel like both of them don't really have a great idea of where their opponent is. I mean, they have vague lines, but I'm not really sure outside of like some of these sniping plays like to the north that either one really wants to get super aggressive right now. Yeah, both sides have, you know, it's been a pretty standard trove trove this entire time, and they're just kind of playing it slow and steady. I think once we reach B phase, when income really just shoots up a ludicrous amount, Maybe someone will start feeling a little bit more ballsy. I think Hippocrats is just really trying to make his southern push happen. He's very close to capturing two flags here, which would be quite good for him. Very true. Uh, now, Romanians are not... Okay, the Romanians are kept, yeah, putting in a squad or two. Just have nothing else. At least plug the gaps minorly. The mortar continues to just kind of shell the north. Very, very interesting there. Now... One thing actually I do like myself, is I, I like seeing a little bit more of an anti-aircraft net over here from the Romanians, because I feel like right now, all the investment they put into place, those recon planes are still not the most durable of things, so having that ground support is really, really beneficial. Yeah, and especially with both divisions being somewhat heavy in the aircraft department, and this is a good map for aircraft, as uh, instantaneous bombing runs can really be clutch especially against some infantry focused divisions and we're definitely seeing both players really just invest heavily we got the bf-110 out in the field which is not a plane you see all too often true now i i think the other thing that's kind of amusing to me too is the light vehicles there's so many recon light vehicles here that it doesn't matter that both infantry squads are extremely well equipped with anti-tank weaponry basically because if we're looking at this they really can't get close enough to use it just the recon optics are just too good yeah oh they're both using the uh, exact same recon cards down so if i forgot both so both sides got those italian clown cars which i don't blame them really good lot of recon cars oh the ap yeah the ap 41s yeah. yes i believe Shh. that thing could also reverse just as fast as it could go forward like it had the driver's seat in the back it's a joke in there somewhere Oh, there's a, a pretty good idea for a recon car. Very obvious joke on that one, but at the same time, that's just that... <laughs> let's try to be nice to our Italian brothers and sisters out there. <laughs> yeah, a bit hard enough. Yeah, exactly. And, like, right now, one of the Veltro is proving that uh, it doesn't matter how, how brave you are, Romans can still die just as easy as anybody else. Um, going down right now, and the BF-110, um, apparently eager for blood, and chasing... This IAR? Yeah. Curious decision. He's usually more of a uh, night fight here at BF Run 10, but he's gonna try to get his daylight kill. But that anti air coming in clutch, getting some very good hits. He's, yeah, he's not gonna be able to make it. Good well, idea to back off. That's kind of my question. Was it that he's a night fighter or he's trying to say good night? Because I feel like that either way it might be true. Yeah. But of course, the IAR apparently have a crazy weird intercept courses for this. Like you said, flight plans, not Eugene's strong point, necessarily. No. Down south, though, this push here from Hippocrats is going okay. He's got a good little foothold of the stern pioneers. Knows it's going to be hard to dig out. We're seeing good counter-battery fire on the anti-air, which is very good play. But that one AB-41 has just a very good lockdown over the reinforcements, and he's going to be able to surround the stern pios. That's true, but at the cost of losing the anti-air, I'm not sure that's really quite worth it, because, yeah. The anti-air has is, is been very, very beneficial for him. Yeah, he just needs to move. Exactly. And move he shall, finally, because those 105s are causing 
absolute havoc. That's true. But I think that's just because those guys finally realized they had to use their Chevrolet legs. Um, <laughs> which I think they're waiting, to, they're waiting for Ford to kind of come rescue them, and that's not going to happen. No. Curiously, the scout planes are back, and there still isn't any ground... Oh, there's a Breda coming in. Okay, there we go. I think he's using it for anti-partisan activity to spot the stern pioneers, and maybe he'll fly back around to drop the bombs, or... Mm. No, he's just going to drop on the LG-42, which is also a pretty respectable target. Uh, yeah, I was going to say. Between that and actually even to pick up the Strife Troop, it doesn't sound like it's a whole lot. But, especially since that guy didn't have a lot of ammo. But you're going to see right here, a couple scout vehicles moving in to kind of develop the understanding in that theater. Because right now, not um, not a lot of awareness. Yeah, honestly, his scout planes are proven to be really clutch, and he's been able to use them pretty much really nilly. He's managing to spot one of the 105 mils so he can start doing some counter battery fire, which is what he's doing by investing in the 122 mil. This could be a pretty good turnaround down south here, 4XX. Very, very true. You know, I, I am mildly amused, not just by the fact that the Vizoria are going to be running back into the Stone Pioneers and probably surrendering here, um, but also the Stug M42 is actually deadly enough to... Uh, really get some work done. Yeah, especially in this sort of matchup where uh, there's currently not any proper stugs on this field. Yeah, Italian stug can, you know, be the stug that we have at home. Exactly. It's not the stug that we wanted, but it's the stug that we were given by the world, so. <laughs> but you can see it right now. Yeah, geez, one picking off one of those light recon vehicles over here in the meantime. Actually, I want to see that 122 when it gets involved. He has a very... Okay. Interesting unload pattern here. I think he realized that uh, the Stern Pioneers are really kind of controlling way more than they should. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty close quarters to the front line. I do they get radios? Yeah, they do have radios, so you don't need to really keep them that close. That does also open up to a little bit more uh, battery fire, counter battery fire. Certainly does seem to be the case. Well, right now the mortar and the 75 mm are getting shellacked. And I think we're going to see, yep, the bulge is going to get reduced here. We have a couple of pioneer, uh, Pioneeries and Kalaris being brought on in between assaults and otherwise. So, yeah, that pocket's getting reduced. Yeah, those stern Pioneers are going to have to do quite a bit of heavy lifting here as this assault of Romanians are going to come barging down their door. And I was, we're already seeing the counter battery fire. And he, definitely not the best position putting the Ron 22 mil on the road. He's actually quite lucky. None of these infantry units actually were forced to disembark. But really, just on point artillery play here from Hippocrats. He's invested quite heavily already, but he's been making them work. Yeah, but I mean, they get a hefty amount of shells. I mean, you can see it right here, it's 50 rounds basically per cannon. So. You don't really have to rush a lot of support trucks to him in the first place, which actually, upon reflection, is good since he has no support trucks. Oh so, my god, you're right. Yes. Does he? I'm. I'm hoping that some of his, what's it called, later artillery transports have supply trucks attached to them. But still, that is not a lot of supplies. You know, Rang. Every now and again, when you're shocked, that you're like, Khan, you're right. And I realize it happens rarely. I realize, but uh, but I um, know it's in the diary. I, dear diary, today oh, dear, no, I scored one. Hey, no, what's what's a what's a journal by but a diary by another name? I'm fine calling it a diary, man. Uh, Pioneer, in the meantime, trying to aggress, and then I thought they were going to reduce that pocket. They're not concerned about that. They're saying, "Screw this, we're getting aggressive here, guys." Yeah, your stun plane is uh, really holding the front cry right. Oh, one, one, one. Yeah, no, he's no not making it. Checks, unfortunately, but no, not not over a double twenty mil. Ah, uh, shame. I think he was trying to do some counter battery fire, looking at the flight pattern. Mm -hmm. That's a little bit of a ballsy move, especially if a heavy bomber like that. That's more of a bomb the front line and then push up and pick up what remains. True, very very true. Oh, so he's quick down. Look. Oh, wasn't even paying attention to it. He's he's down the one one one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yikes. That's a big loss for nothing. Yeah, it's 110 points. Lost for no gain. Should be hmm. 111 points. Eugene, please. 
Yeah, by that point, you have something else has to be nine points, and or just yeah. Or or hear me out. You have to get an availability of ten to make it even to work back out. Or you buy you buy five of them, and you're good. Fine, you can do five as well. I was thinking I'm like Battle of Britain numbers. That's true. I guess I was trying to think of like you know Battle of Britain numbers. I mean, fascinating. <laughs> and here's a reduction of the pocket. There we go. The two rink-eating planes moving on in. Yeah. Even the 20 mils can't repel that. And honestly, even more dispersion, that's exactly what they're... they're that's fine. But more, more importantly, just getting the fallback on the stern pioneers. And just getting them out of that bloody forest will definitely leave a bit of pressure. That's just one problem when fighting on the shell. Is that trying to clear up enemy attacks because you never know that could always be a sneaky recon unit somewhere in the forest which is going to snipe your back line it's so easy to sneak through on this map it very much is you're absolutely correct I, there's a piece of me that was always wondering if we'd make a comment about like there's always a bigger fish and i was like master qui-gon what are we going to do there's a um, piece of ptrs in your back line somewhere even if you're not fighting against the russians oh that's exactly what i was going to say is that only if you're only if they're russian um, BF-110, though, coming on in and taking out Damn. that recon vehicle. I mean, it was a 20mm cannon on the front. I mean... Yeah, it's quite a lot of them as well. Oh, two 30 mils as well, so that is... I mean, it's meant to shoot down a bomber. I think it can definitely kill an armored car. That's it's true. Really go down now. Well, well, one of the yeah. 105s is down, so that that's actually not an inconsiderable loss either. In fact, wait, are two of them down? Two of them are down. Oh, wow. The counter battery is starting to really. Why such a X axis counter battery is starting to get pretty nuts. You know, when the enemy brings 105s, you got to bring 122s. That's but true. We're also seeing a Hippocrat. This is becoming an arms roar now. He's buying some SK18s, which I believe, yeah, those longer uh, barreled pieces, which are better for the counter battery work. So I think we're going to have an arty party calm. That might be the case, but there's certainly a lot of arms carrying uh, weapons down south. You can see right now between fusiliers, a fusilier push, which is these guys. Yeah, this this is one of the few sets of recon troops that I'd be like, okay, yeah, you guys take the lead. Yeah, it's devastating the pioneer. And behind them, a lot of strife troops being moved on in, a lot of pioneers being moved on in, and of course. Some fewer there to kind of watch the rear because that's what officers are good for. Mm -hmm. But it Watching is tough. Your ass get blown up. Oh, absolutely! You know, it's the the privilege of rank is uh, guarding the supplies. So. Yes. But oh yeah, it's so a trove trove. Really not. It's it's been more of like a balanced income style match considering the actual map developments. Everything's especially since. The five minute mark has all just been focused down south here, so it's been a very grindy back and forth. But it seems like Hippo Crash will be taking the lead once again. As it's looking on the front line down south, it is much more red. It's red, that's true. That's very, very true. Um, now, sadly, what we just saw is we saw one of the looks go down over here to the AB 41. And at the worst time, too, because there's this giant reinforcement column being moved on in, and it doesn't seem to matter that some of these troops were picked off. Mm-hmm. See, um, also a big reinforcement column here from XX to shore up the southern defenses. I feel like the main reason he hasn't been able to get as good of a defensive front line currently is just a heavy investment in his 122mm. And it is going to open up a window of opportunity here for Hippocrast to push through, but it's a shell. And reconnaissance is hard on this map. Real Hippocrats pick us up. Certainly an excellent question on that one. Uh, we are watching as a couple 45 mil anti-tank guns do get taken out, which is unsurprising. I mean, those guys are good, but they're not great. It's it's they're good enough to do the job that they're that you're paying them for, really. Yeah. But my AR strike. Yeah, exactly. I was going to call out right there, and I mean, we're going to get the suppression. And a kill, wow. Mm. Really needs to try and knock out those recon planes. Not even just full of bombing, it's just the eyes on their getting, especially on these artillery guns, is proven to be quite deadly. 
I think the confusing thing for me is the fact that now we're getting Baglit Grenadiers being brought on in. So, we have Gebirgsjäger troops, we have German troops fighting German troops, but are under the Romanian flag. Very, oh, yeah. very confusing. This is why we don't do mirror matches often. Even though this isn't technically a mirror match, but it kind of is. It's kind of like a dark mirror match. A black mirror, if you will. <laughs> um, but now the recon push is going the other direction here in the south, and that, that reinforcement column is just deadly enough. Just deadly enough to be really deadly. Which sounds ridiculous, yeah. but it works. Now, those are some pretty deadly words. But no, just the uh, 2225 support, especially with no anti tank down south, is more than enough to just push on through the Fuhrer, getting a bit furious, yeah. But that's going to be a pretty good counter attack here, 4XX. Will he exploit you? Will he try to push further down south, or is he just going to hold the crossroads? That is the question. Yeah, I think the unfortunate thing is that AP Horsch at that point was like, you know what, man, I'm going to shoot the machine gun. Let's make it fair. Uh, and, and pays for that that same kind of brave temerity. Also worthwhile, I think we're going to get a push over here in the northern side. We have a 170 marking a target just to the west of them. And there's, actually, there's a lot of untapped potential here, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Hippocrats get really frisky in the, in, yeah. you know, in the near future. He's already doing a pretty good job down south. I don't feel like he's going to make much more progress. Oh, yeah, Stug 3 on the hill is sniping. I love you. Yeah, it's such a good bloody position. But what I, like I was saying, I don't feel like he's going to get much more progress down south as this massive reinforcement of Romanian infantry is going to be enough to hold up no man's land pretty much. So trying to open up the front on the northern end, especially if a devastating barrage like that, uh, that's the shift to scale is quite a bit. <clears throat> oh my gosh. Watch this AB horse take out the Stoke from the side. That would be amazing and sad at the same time. He's uh, he's going on a bit of a walkabout. Oh, yeah. I think he's just trying to get to the enemy uh, rear line to become from 222 to 223, but uh, no one has told him about the downgrade jack courses. That's or, true. I guess 233 is... No, 223 is a machine gun one. Yes, I remember now. Which essentially means it's it's largely worthless. Uh, the IAR, I think, actually will go down with all this, these sources of ground fire it's taking right now. It's one, two, three. Yeah, three separate sources here. Engine's overheating for sure, so he's feeling a little bit hot under the collar. Does he limp away, though? He limps Jeez. away. Jeez. The heavy HE run, run, run gets a little bit scared. You know, from a few 20 mils, but the IAR, I don't know, they just, it just built different in Romania, apparently. You know, I think it's because it's such a light aircraft, the holes when they punch through don't really actually affect the overall structure. I, I don't think know. also because it has, like, double the rings, it's like double HP. I think it's because it had stabilizers. Oh. And that's never that mind you, be it. technically all planes have stabilizers. Technically, you're correct, which is the best kind of correct. True, true. Uh, and technically, as we continue being technical, that northern push, that 170, yeah, that is firmly now within Hippocrates' control. That that you know, That's never coming back there, Doc. Yeah, and considering it down south has actually gone pretty well here for XX, actually still keeping it an even 12-12, just a geographical gauge up north by holding that hill is huge. Because it's pretty hard to lose that hill once you fully capture it. Especially if Hippocrats can get some anti-tank guns on that hill, some of those Romanian 75 mils fire mm -hmm. support. Mm -hmm. That opens up a whole heap of the northern front. Now, when you say Hippocrats bringing in those troops, you mean the German troops, right? You mean... for Because Hippocrats yeah, is... Yeah, the... The... yeah, Hippocrats is the German. That's why I was... Because he has the hill up north. Yes, yes, very much so. But I was—I guess is, I was. We don't exactly. Right now, it's like in the in the red axis the, troops and the blue axis yeah. troops. So you know. Because I like what Germans are we talking about? The Begley Grenadiers? Are we talking about the Greb Strifers? And, and that's the, the Italian cars. Well, and, and down to the south, for example, we have Begley Grenadiers being surrendered by you know Gebirgsjäger pioneers, which kind of is kind of like defecting back to your own side so yeah it's, it's a very very curious thing overall but when you have you know the fifth light fighting the fifth mountain it's kind of hard to not cast that 
Yeah, and you got the the fifth mount that the German guys are also using a lot of Italian equipment, but then the Romanians mm. using like a lot of German equipment. So we're just having like a whole Axis party here, really. That's true. That's true. The only one they're not bringing in is, is Franco, because he was kind of just, you didn't feel like actually coming to the party. He was a dude that was like, you know what, man? I'm going to RSVP that I'll join and then never show up. Maybe but, he went to the Allied party, which is much cooler. Yes. He the beer kegs. Yes. And uh, he had a little bit of a siesta and woke up six years later and was like, oh, oh, the war's over. Okay, great. Wonderful. So it worked out for him. Northern side, we are seeing a minor reduction. It's nothing crazy, because right now it's still very much a hilltop position, which is not going to be fun to attack, especially with the AP-41 below and the Shug above. Yeah, so it's very well defended here from Hippocrat. And he is doing... What, where are his pioneers going? Oh, he's moving them down south. I feel like Hippocrat is going to try to take out town just northwest of the hill where the horse and the hot kiss is mm -hmm. it, you, oh yeah they they are very very optimistic about their chances of getting forward uh, for their forwards they got the stug coming in the discount stug well the hot kiss is down so that was a big issue right there and the horse for some reason apparently doesn't think it's important enough to actually engage the infantry here no line of sight unfortunately and he's gonna pay the iron price it seems Maybe. Yep. Oh yeah. That's a very effective push. Just like, just having the bit of fire support on that hill is going to be more than enough. We're seeing a Russian Romanian forty-five mil being brought in to shoot the Italian tank being manned by Germans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and the forty-five mil is going to have more than enough to penetrate. Yep. There we go. It doesn't matter if it's a door knocker if you're only kind of going through a Dutch door. Yeah, we've seen the sniper get the revenge, yeah, or two snipers actually, but that horse now being a big fist in this rather small pond can actually start making some good kills, unless I've... he gets too close. I forgot, the, the pioneers actually have a jerry can bomb. I... Pretty ghetto. It, oh, absolutely. I, it just is one of those things again. It's kind of like, first of all, you're taking like the ethnic. I am not sure how to call it, but I somehow find myself doubting that Germans were like, "Yeah, we're Jerry's." No, <laughs> it's like Gerhardt's maybe, but like Jerry's, eh. Or using the fuel and Jerry cans as bombs. It's like, guys, you kind of need that for the tanks. <laughs> you don't want to have a lot of it left. Find me the nearest Kubelwagen! Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking on the artillery, Roy, I've been noticing that a lot of the 122 mils have been blown up to smithereens, which is definitely given a hippocracy edge in regards to the heavy artillery. And also, just as a nice little touchback, you were wondering about there being munitions trucks. I mean, there's a Maltia that has 7,700 munitions, so there, there, there is potential there. Yeah. We've seen the uh, the 1105, which is still alive, is only has three shells left, so he's really having to ration his ammo. Seems rather true. I'm also kind of surprised that the IAR 80s are still active here. I, this is not exactly what I would consider to be an extremely aggressive weapons platform, but hey, I guess yeah. when you're Fighting against really just a couple BF 109s that are just way too expensive to be brought in. I guess that's that's what what happens. Mm -hmm. And a rather underwhelming strafing run from the performance. Yeah, just gonna take a few flag fire and then bugger off. It seems, but it's not looking that great for XX. I mean, Hippocrates' northern post definitely caught him off guard, and down south, yeah, XX is slowly getting pushed back here. Yeah, and we're actually seeing a lot of little sneaky things here and there like the strife troops that are actually through the front lines and if they wanted to they probably could pick up one of the few stugs that is still on the map of course are you saying they could cause a bit of strife oh yeah lots of strife lots of strife um you know that's that poor stug over there he's trying to live the stug life and i don't think he's going to be able to enjoy it for too much longer no oh. of They've course got off map artillery here from next that is a mm -hmm. Rather sexy position, yeah. 
what caliber is yeah? One seventy twos. Okay, so it might kill the stunk. One one seventy twos, fifty twos, fifty twos. Excuse me. It, it starts with a one and ends in a two. Okay. Um, but it still is a thirteen eleven over here. In the meantime, I think it's really just because. Yep. Okay. So the strife is going to be able to pick up the stug. And the artillery strike is going to start landing on the other stug. So we could be strugless very, very soon. That's one. Yeah, the artillery shells are coming on in. And unfortunately, there's nothing really here immediately able to follow this up. No, he has a little bit of infantry, but it's definitely more of a defensive fire than just trying to... Yeah, yeah if he was to follow up, he'd get so many captures, but... It was kind of under. It, I mean, it pinned everything down, but they're just gonna unpin themselves after a little bit. Exactly. Exactly. And I mean, right now too, we are seeing that the troops down to the southern side are completely Whoa. cut off. It got very red very quickly. Yeah, it is. Yeah, fifteen nine now for Hippocrats, even though it's not, a, you know, a strong position down south. At the same time, it's not a whole lot of reinforcements coming in either. It's it's more of strong enough, you know. Yeah. And because in the meantime, the lack of any kind of counterattacking forces, you can see that those Germans that were hit by that off map, just kind of chilling now, not really caring too much. Living and, their best life. Exactly. They can. Exactly, and you got and you gotta respect that. It's one of those things, man. Like, yep, just living their lives. Indeed. I do like our little pioneer soap position all the way up north. He's not going to be able to do too much, but he can give any Germans a rude awakening if they try to take position in that forest. Uh, the Kalari that's engaged in the strife right now? Uh, no, the, all the way up north, the pioneer soap. Oh, not all the way up north on the hill. He's like behind enemy lines. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, a little, yeah, little bit further south than I was thinking. Yep. But at this point, it's 59. It doesn't really matter, does it? No, it doesn't. I mean, seeing the IARs coming and running again, I'm utterly surprised they're still alive. But And they've definitely racked up quite a bit of a kill tally. But it has not been enough, unfortunately. Even just the information of warfare. I mean, he's lost the artillery game. XX at his, his point. And Hippocrates is definitely making him pay. Yeah, I'm almost surprised we haven't seen heavier bombers over here from... Hippocrass, but he hasn't really needed it either, though, so I guess it's a little hard for me to be too critical about that. I think he's just been using his artillery as uh, heavy sure. bombers. Sure. In a way, they're kind of like bombs. They yeah. They fall from the sky at a high angle. Yeah, but I feel like it's one of those things that you need more of like a, a, a Dear John letter. As opposed to a, to whom it may concern. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel that personal touch is necessary when you're yeah. blowing him into smithereens. I mean, call him old-fashioned. I I wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of a tap here pretty quickly. I mean, 16-8, and I feel like the Romanians are kind of running out of troops to effectively assault these positions, which is bizarre because they have half again as many infantry as the Germans do. Of course, the Germans trading it out for a lot more veterancy, and you know, and really, some of those armored fighting vehicles as well. Yeah, and there's also lots of SCGs goes quite a long way when it comes to having a bit of a firefight. And it's going to go even further when your opponent goes and donates some squads to uh, G43s and MG42s. Like it's, it's it's a very very generous thing. This yeah, we've seen a decent attack here down south on that hill. Using the aircraft and the Panzer II leaks for a bit of fire support. But even then, it's just not going to be enough. It's just a lot of. Well, German infantry he still has to break through. Very, very true. Do you think maybe we take this to a times two, like 3510? Uh, sounds good. Oh, okay. So, folks, as we kind of just continue to see this last little bit come out here, yeah, we are seeing some small successes here and there. But. It just, it's just not going to come in time. It just, they're buying time with their little flesh bag bodies. Mm -hmm. 
the one thing that's been kind of surprising to me is that there hasn't been more action here to the northern side, and we're seeing a couple of Azorii being brought on in now. There we go. But um, not quite seeing an efficient push, really, overall. Yeah, we saw the starts of something up north here from XX as he did try to make something happen, but he didn't really follow through after it initially failed. And it just became, you know, that meat grinder down south for its hippo crash broke by pushing far up north. But looking at the uh, KD difference at 800, which is honestly not that bad. It felt, it felt like it was worse. Sure. I think also a lot of the Romanian stuff is pretty cheap. True. That's very, very true. What we see right about now, if we're going into the actual kills in the meantime, Hippocras, we have a couple of Fusiliers, and again, this is what I was talking about before. These Fusiliers are really strong. Mm hmm. A couple of Pioneer squads punching above their weight, so being very, very successful there. IARs, on the other hand, four kills for one. So far as the killiest thing other than a recon vehicle. Three kills for the other. And four kills over here for the 122. Yeah. Outside of that, it's it's kind of telling when your recon planes are more deadly <laughs> than most of your troops, you know? Yeah. They, they sort of used uh, those IARs for the Blitz, honestly. Absolutely. Probably would have been more effective considering those run on runs just get shot down immediately. Absolutely. But, folks, I believe that's going to do it about for us today. Uh, unless you have any other thoughts, sir? No. Well, folks, in that case, then, yep, that will, in fact, do it for us today. Until Thursday, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.